got to learn to lay those burdens down. Amen, amen. There's no... Oh, I love it. That's good. That's great. Yeah, it's nice, huh? So, yeah, you got to learn to lay those burdens down. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen? Amen. So we got to learn to lay those burdens down at the foot of the cross. Amen. Uh, too many people are carrying around too many burdens when we just need to give them to the Lord. Amen. And when we give them to Him, we don't need to go back and collect them up again. Amen. We need to give them to Him and leave them with Him. Amen? And trust that He's going to do what He's supposed to do in our lives. Amen? Amen. So I'll tell you what, I can do a good enough job messing my life up <laughs> right? when I try to do things on my own. Amen. And I'm sure you're probably right there the same way, right? We're going to look at one verse tonight, and we're going to kind of look at it. Uh, there's four essential uh, things in this verse that's effective for Christian living in this one verse in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. It says, be on guard. That's one. Stand firm in the faith. That's two. Be courageous. That's three. And it says, be strong. Amen. And that's the fourth one. Amen? So that's a formula right there. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. And be strong. And we're going to look at each one of those tonight. And we're going to kind of break that down. So we got to be watchful. we got to have watchfulness. we gotta, we got to be on guard. we got to be aware of, of, of dangers. we got to be aware of spiritual dangers. we got to be on guard from ourselves. Amen. From ourselves. Amen. As I just said, I, I can do a good enough job of jacking my life up, right? Amen. First Corinthians, Paul said in the 9.27, Now I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Right? So I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave. So make sure you don't lose interest in spiritual disciplines. Make sure that you don't lose interest in praying, in reading the word, in being in fellowship. I said it to some of you earlier before church, man, it's good to see you here. Nothing wrong with grabbing a service online, but once a week you need to be in the building with the saints. Amen, amen. Right? Nothing wrong with online church, but you need to come once a week, either it's a Wednesday, a Tuesday, or a Sunday, and you need to get amongst the brothers. With, because I can't see you through that phone right there. That's right. I can't see you through the camera in Holville. Amen. And you can walk in and I can look at you in my script and say, man, there's something going on with, with Donna. I need, I need to get with her. <laughs> right? Yes, or, or, matter of fact, we're, we're going to pray later. Yep. You can't come to the altar and have anyone lay hands on you. That's right. You need that. Amen. The Word of God says that you need to come together. They went to the temple courts daily. Broke bread, ate together, prayed together, and all that stuff, right? That's right. You've got to be in fellowship. And this is great temporarily, but too many people have taken this and made this their church. Come on. And it's not what it's supposed to be. That's right. That's Hebrews 10, 24 wasn't for you to meet me right here. That's right. Right? It's for you to meet me right here. That's right. Amen. Right? That's right. Amen. So that's for some of you out there. Nothing wrong with tuning in. I mean, it's great to have this, but don't let this just be, oh, this is how I'm going to be fed. Amen. That's how it works. That's what that scripture is for. Same. Right? Amen. Be careful. Too many folks are drifting away. Too many folks have just gotten comfortable. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And, 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 and the enemy likes to get you comfortable. That's right. Keep you at home, away from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Isolated. That's where he wants you. Then he can work you over. And then there's nothing we can do to help you. We might find out when it's too late. We might find out when damage has already been done. We're here for you. But I can tell by most people, I'm, I'm pretty good at my spirit testifying when people are struggling to go into things. And I might not even go up to me and approach you, but I guarantee I'll be going home and praying for you. Hey, whatever's going on with, with Rudy, let's see Rudy as a temple. Lord God, be with him. Amen. Amen. Whatever's going on. Amen. That's right. Because right. I can see you. Amen. Amen. There can be many distractions from our main purpose in life. Don't get lazy in your walk with the Lord. Amen. Don't get lazy. Don't stop reading your word. Don't stop praying. Don't stop being the hands and feet of Jesus. And we talked about it as we've been in that GPS series. That the Lord had a burning bush and it got Moses' attention. He went over and he investigated. Amen. Man, what's up with this burning bush? How many burning bushes did you walk by today? Man, I'm in a hurry. I've got to get to where I'm going. <laughs> stuff burning all around you. The Lord's trying to get your attention. He wanted to use you. Right? 
So, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Amen for the prize. See, we're really good about telling everyone else what they need to do and live and how they need to live, right? I'm really good at it. Hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. We're all good at it. My wife is. <laughs> she's real good at it. She gets to practice on me all the time. Man. Amen. And we're here. We're to hold each other accountable. If I ever tell you anything that's out of love, it's because it's my duty. Not as your pastor, but as your brother in Christ. Amen. It's your duty to hold me accountable. Amen. That's right. Not to say, hey, I caught you doing this, but hey, brother, could you have done this a little better, maybe this way? Yeah. Nothing Amen. wrong with that. That's how we iron sharpens iron, right? Amen. But we need to make sure that we're practicing what we preach. That's right. Amen. I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. We've got to always remember that the best sermon that we can preach is the one that we walk out in our lives. Amen. Yeah, we can say a few things on the side. But man, if you're not walking it out, you can come up to me and tell me all kinds of stuff. That's great. But if I see you over here playing around, man, everything that you told me is going to be right out the window. I'm not going to say, hey, the Lord didn't tell you, tell you to tell me something. But when I see you over here goofing around where you shouldn't be, well, I guess that wasn't from the Lord what they told me. Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. But man, we need to make sure that we guard ourselves so that we can guard our walk, we can guard our testimony, that we can be a, te we're supposed to be a walking billboard for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. People are supposed to come in to uh, have an encounter with Christ when they have an encounter with you. Amen. They should go away feeling like they've been in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I'll be honest with you, people's left my presence and they didn't feel that way. <laughs> but man, I, I think about those. I'm not going to sit here and think, oh, I got it all going on. No, I don't. But man, I want to be better than I was those times. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? <clears throat> there has been times people have left and they can move right on. And there's been times people have left and they'll, they'll never get the opportunity to leave again because they'll never... There's, I've ran people out, out of this church before. In my 10 years of being a pastor. I've made mistakes. Amen. And I know that. So I can preach on it. <laughs> I can speak on it. <laughs> I can admit it. Right? Can you admit the areas of your life where you've been wrong? Yes. Admit the mistakes that you've made? We've got to be able to do those things, folks. If you know that's where maturity, you know, I've been going to the gym and I get get stronger. And and that comes from shocking that muscle, it comes from hard work, it comes from growth. Right? Right. We gotta grow spiritually too. We're gonna make mistakes. But man, that mistake is a lesson. It doesn't define who you are. How you handle it defines who you are. Amen. Amen. Right? You need to handle it the way the Lord would handle it, right? Amen. Amen. Yes. So I just want to impress that on you. Be on guard against, we've got to be on guard against false teachers. There's a lot of them out there. Second Peter 2, 1 through 2. But there were also false prophets among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. And it's important that you know the Word of God. It's important that you read the Word of God. It's important that you know the Word of God. Don't trust me. You need to know the Word of God. Amen. You need to be able to, to know if I'm telling you the truth or not. Amen. You need to know if you go somewhere, you go visit a church. I shared it before our daughter went visit the church and she, the first service or so it was great. But then that guy came out with a false doctrine. And she's like, this ain't the church for us. See where we need to be. If she was ignorant of the things of the Lord, she didn't read her Bible. Yeah, she was saved, but just listen to whoever was talking to her. She would have went right along with that. She might still be over there three years later just being polluted with false doctrine. And then therefore might go out and share that same false doctrine with somebody else. You've got to be careful. So many people are led astray because they do not know the Word of God. And here, you ain't got to be. High school education. Went to Turning Point Ministries on methamphetamine 17, almost 17, 16 and a half years ago. My education is I just get in the Word of God to study. Yeah. Right? You don't need to, you know, God, he'll reveal the word to you. Pray and study. Pray and read. Get the word in you. Get it in you. So that when someone's coming at you, maybe get your commentary out. 
If you got a question, or get you a study Bible. And don't just read the word. Look down and look at the footnotes and see what that guy has to say about it. Get another study Bible from another guy. Compare. And always pray before you read. Lord God, cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind. Prepare up my soil. We talked about it Sunday, the four soils, right? The parable, one of the first parables he preached there. And, and, and it's on the condition of your heart. What, what's the condition of your heart? Like I said it last Sunday, your, the, your heart should have been dealt with before you walked in that door. Or at least by the time your butt hit that seat, you should have said, Lord, get me straight with you. I'm not here to fulfill some Christian duty. I'm here to receive something from you tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole purpose of being here. It's not to hear me bark at you for 30 minutes. It's to get something out of the world. So that you can leave here always say just a little bit different, man. If you can leave each church service just a little bit different. Every time you crack that word open, just a little bit different. Every time you pray, just a little bit different. You won't be that person you were yesterday. You'll be a little bit different. And I think the Lord would be pleased with that. I think he would be pleased. First Timothy 4 1. The Spirit clearly says in the later times, some will abandon the faith. Whoa. And follow deceiving spirits and the things taught by demons. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Abandon the faith in later times. I think we're in later times. Yeah. Some will abandon the faith. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. If there's something going on in your life. This is the place that you need to be. That's yeah. right. Don't let the enemy lie to you. This is where you need to be. You need to be in your word. You need to be praying. You need to be on the phone telling people, hey, I'm struggling. I need prayer. You need to be having the saints intercede for you. Right? Clearly says in a matter of time, some will abandon the faith following deceiving spirits. That means you get deceived. It happened in the garden. Surely you won't die. That's all the Satan had to do. Surely you won't die. What, four words? Five words? Surely you won't die? Four words. Deceived. Boom. They're sin. Just got him to doubt God's word. That's all he had to do. Yeah. Just doubt what God told you. How many times, maybe you've even doubted what God's told you. There's been times I've doubted. There's been times I've had weak faith. There's been times I've been beat up. But man, I got up every day. I still got to my office every morning in there. I still read there. There's times I don't want to be in there reading my word, praying, going over my list of 30-something people that are sick. There's times I don't want to do it. But every morning, I go to that coffee pot, I get that cup, and I sit down, and I here we go, Lord. Right? Yes. And God honors that. Amen. He honors the faithfulness. He honors the discipline. That's right. There's going to be times you don't want to be in church. You need, that's when you need to be here the most. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. When we study the Word, we are training ourselves. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers... He's speaking to some of you tonight. Some of you tuned in. Listen closely. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. But this part of the scripture, I caught it about a year and a half ago. I've read the scripture many times, but you need someone to teach you elementary truths of God's word all over again. How many times have you come to the Lord? Got it right for a little while. And then here you go around that mountain again. Right? Then you had to come back all over again. Let's do it again. Right? You, you had those spiritual disciplines for a little while. You were doing all right. And then the enemy lied to you, deceived you, and got you off course and here we go coming back again Lord all over again there's people that are on the bottle right now that should be chucking steak to people <laughs> right anyone who lives on milk still being an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about uh, right teachings about righteousness there's some folks who only hear the word when they come here they don't crack their Bible open at home. And the odds are there's some of you in here that might be that person. That's the odds. That's the statistics. And some tuned in that this is the only time they're being fed the Word of God. And I'm telling you tonight, if that's the case, you will spiritually starve to death. Amen. Man, you've got to be grubbing every day on the Word. This is just a little bonus during the week. This is dessert. 
You got to be feeding yourself every day. People don't study on their own. And because of that, they believe whatever they hear. They get misled by false doctrine. This is for somebody tonight or someone that's going to be tuned in or someone that's going to tune in later. Pay attention to the word. Some of you should be on meat. Not still on the bottle. For you mothers, how would you like it if your kid's 16 years old and you still got a bottle feed them? <laughs> Right? Man, you want them off that bottle as soon as you can, right? How do you think the Lord feels about some? Still being bottle fed. As we talked about discipleship. You have to choose to be a disciple. Right? You have to. Those who want to follow me must deny themselves. There's no other way. You've got to deny yourself. There's no shortcut to discipleship. You've got to deny yourself. You've got to pick up that cross and you've got to follow Jesus. And that starts with getting on the meat. Getting off the bottle. Because a disciple produces another disciple. This church would be fuller, church in Hopo would be fuller if we produced other disciples. We'd have to build bigger churches, actually, if we produced other disciples. Our church isn't the only one that's struggling with people not coming out. Almost every church is. Church attendance is down below 50%. Right now in the United States. And yet there's people risking their lives in other countries to gather with the saints. That would say to heck with tuning into this thing, man. I need to be there in person. I got to memorize this chapter because I can't carry my Bible down the street. And when I got to get there, we, we got about eight hours before we all gather and get in one room so we can go over the scripture for 12 hours. Some of us are home in our PJs already. Eating a couple of noodles, watching Dua. We have the privilege that we can gather. Oh, help us, Lord. Help the church in America. Help us. But the mature says, and I'm not coming down on anybody, man. If you're here for the first time tonight, welcome back. I'm not coming down on nobody. I'm just speaking the truth. Amen, amen, amen. I wasn't planning on saying this tonight. This is what the Lord's got coming out of my mouth, and I got to run with it. That's right. Because I'm a vessel. That's right. It's for somebody. <laughs> this is for somebody. Grab it. But the mature have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And that's a person who feeds themselves the Word of God. Train themselves. You've got to train yourself. Man, you've got to get disciplined. To, to, to open that word every day, to have those spiritual time with the Lord in the morning or in the evening or throughout the day, constantly be in prayer, you know, those kind of things. Not, not wake up and say your little prayer, read your little chapter and forget about God till the next morning. That's not how it works. First Timothy 4, 7, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives to, tells. Rather, train yourself to be godly. And I'm going to challenge you tonight to train yourself to be godly. Training is our responsibility. We've got the Word. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've got everything that we need. Now we've got to train ourselves. Right? It wouldn't do me no good if I went to the gym or went into the gym and we just sat there looking at the equipment. <laughs> you see those things that my doctor said spend an hour on the treadmill. It's just a guy taking a nap for an hour and then on the treadmill. <laughs> right? doesn't do any good to have those 66 books. 30,000 whatever verses if you ain't cracking it open and reading it, right? So you'll never mature into the follower that Christ desires by just listening to me or any other preacher. Amen. You'll never mature. You'll never be what God's called you to be because he's called you to go out and minister the gospel Amen. to your neighborhood, to your family. How many of you have family members that aren't saved? Every hand in here. 20 hands, right, or whatever. 20 people, this right here. Probably multiple family members. When's the last time you talked to them about Jesus? Something to think about, amen? amen? Be on guard for spiritual opportunities. 610, therefore, Galatians 610, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So that's telling us to look for opportunities 
well, for, for the Lord to use you to be his hands and be his feet. Be on guard for that. Be looking. Wake up in the morning expecting God to have someone to put in your path, someone to minister to. Ephesians 2, Tim, or God's handiwork, prayed in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'm partaking in some good works he prepared long ago when I was sucking on a meth pipe 20 years ago. Man, one day if he, if he follows my will, I'm going to use him to minister my gospel. Amen. I'm walking in it. Every time I run across someone and able just to minister, even if they don't receive it, even if they ask, uh, I did what I was supposed to do. Amen. That's the good work. Amen. God is pleased. Amen. Right? Amen. Look for those opportunities. And be on guard against the enemy. How many of you know you have the enemy and it's not Biden, it's not your neighbor, it's not your boss, it's not the IRS. <laughs> it's the devil. First Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Did you wake up this morning knowing, thinking about the enemy that looking for the bullseye on your back? He's looking for you. He would love to destroy your marriage. He would love to destroy your finances. He would love to ruin anything that's good in your life because that's his job. Did you wake up this morning thinking about that? Man, I got an enemy. Back in the day, in the old life, if you had an enemy, you kept your eye open for that dude, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got an enemy that's way worse than any enemy you could ever have in your life. Yes. Amen. Be on guard. And the best way to do it is be alert and of sober mind. Amen. Right. Sober mind. Second thing we're going to look at is standing firm in the faith. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith. We must be equipped to stand. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Therefore, put on the armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, when the day comes, it's coming. You have an enemy. His name is the devil, right? You will may be able to stand your ground. Too many Christians right now aren't able to stand their ground. Too many Christians right now are getting beat up by the enemy when he doesn't have any authority in their life. Amen. He doesn't. Kick rocks, devil. Amen. It's like Jesus told him when he was took out to the desert and tempted. Away from me, Satan. James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. And if you've got to say, Lord, your word says in James 4, 7, submit to you, resist the devil, and he must flee. Lord, make him for you. Amen. Speak his word out. After you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. We're talking about the armor of God. You've got to be grounded in faith. And that faith is based on the knowledge of God. That's why it's so important for you to be in your word. Because if, there, if, you don't, if you're not in the word, you, your faith isn't where it should be. Amen. So important to be in your word. It's important to hear the word preached too. It's important to be here tonight. It's important to hear other people preach the word. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. So weak faith is common in someone who's not in the word. The devil has a field day with someone who's not in the word. And if you're like me, there's times I read the word out loud. I'll read my Bible out loud. So I hear myself. So I hear the word. I hear it with my ears. I'm not just reading it under my breath, but I'll read it out loud. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word. So I would encourage you to read your Bible out loud. Go in your room, get some private time, and, and read the word out loud. Read it to yourself. Uh, so that it will strengthen your faith. But the word is what strengthens your faith. And if you don't, if you if the word's not in you, you don't understand and realize all the promises that God has for you. You don't know that the weapon may form, but it won't prosper. You don't know that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength? Hallelujah. When you don't know those things, they're not in you? Automatically, when anything comes up against me, that scripture pops into my mind. Boom, I know it. It's part of my life. Well, hold on a minute. I can do all things through Christ. The weapon may form, but it's not going to prosper. Amen. When you know those things, God will remind you of those things. He'll remind you of that word that's in you. And you'll just keep flowing. You'll keep walking. Everything will be all right. You won't miss a beat. You won't get all stumbled up and tripped up and caught up in something. You'll just keep on trucking with the Lord. Amen. Colossians 3.16 Let the message of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Right? As you teach and admonish one another. So as you spend time in the Word of God 
You spend time in the Word, God will give you something to share with others. He'll give you something to share. I don't know how many conversations I've had with people that are Christian over the last 16 and a half years I've been a Christian. They're Christians. And they never bring up God. They never bring up how, man, there's something jumped out of that scripture at them. They never bring up, hey, I was in prayer, man. They never bring up, hey, the Holy Spirit. They never bring up none of that stuff. They'll gossip and do all that other stuff. <laughs> but they never bring up some encounter or some intimate time that they had with the Lord. And it blows me away. Right? They'll gossip about worldly things and stuff, but never, hey, pastor, man, when I was in my quiet time with the Lord, man, he spoke to me in this, or, or, or I was reading this scripture. A lot of them you don't hear that from. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom songs, hymns, songs of the Spirit. And like I said, some believers, you never, you never hear anything from them about that. They've never said anything about that, about a passage or anything about that. That's why it's important. When you read the Word and God reveals things to you, He wants you to take that. I don't care if you know two Scriptures. Go tell everyone you know those two Scriptures. And then learn another one. <laughs> and then learn another one. You know, when we, when I was in the men's home, we had to memorize six Scriptures a week. Some of these guys here have been there. They know. And the most I ever memorized was three. It was my mind. You know, I've done a lot of dopey stuff in my life. And got a couple of brain cells missing. But man, I... You had to write them 25 times if you didn't get them right. So I wrote the, every scripture 25 times, all six of them, studying them. I figured if I don't learn it after writing it 25 times, I'm not going to learn it. <laughs> but it, it got in me. It was still in there. It's still in there. I, I may know the verse, but I don't know the address or whatever. And I may it may come out and it won't even come out of scripture. It'll just come out... You know, when you God puts that person in your in your path and, and, and all of a sudden you come up on someone that bonds and man they're in desperate need and they need they need some encouragement and all of a sudden it comes out. And you're like they're like, Oh my god, I'm so glad I ran into you and I'm thinking, Thank you, Lord, for giving me the word to say. That wasn't me. And they're all thank you so much. And you walk away thinking, Thank you, Lord. You know, that was in you. You gotta get it down in you. Amen. 1 Peter 3.15 But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. That's a problem. A lot of people don't revere Him as Lord. They revere Him as Savior. They want that grace and that salvation. They want the cross, but is He Lord of your life? you got to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. The sad thing is, there's believers operating with no hope. So that's not any testimony to anyone in the world. There's believers that will never be asked. Hey man, where's this hope, man? Where do you get this hope that you have? Where do you? Because they don't reflect it in their life. Right? Third one, be courageous. And that's spiritual maturity. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. <clears throat> be mature. Right? 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put my childish ways behind me. Amen. Right? And once again, this all comes back to the Word. Because courageousness, maturity all comes from a renewed mind. If you're not in the Word, you're going to be mature as a day, as immature as the day it was that you came to the Lord. Amen. I know folks that have been in the Lord five years that are way more mature than some folks that have been in the Lord 20 years. Because they spend time with God. And, you know, He's done, done everything for us. We're going to celebrate it this Sunday. He's, that tomb is empty. It gives us access to everything that He has. But we got to go get it. we got to get that. We got Me and my wife don't have a relationship and she just does her part. That's not a relationship. It's two people coming together, compromising, right? God's done, done everything He's going to do. Now we got some things that we need to do. Amen. we got to exercise those spiritual disciplines to get... In His will, get lined up with Him so that we can receive what He has for us. Amen. We've been talking about it, that GPS being routed, rerouted back to Him. Amen. And don't be naive. 1 John 4.1 1 John 4.1 
Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Once again, it goes back to being in your word. A lot of us are operating, or some of us, I don't say a lot, but with a quenched spirit. Right? Our spirit is quenched. Like I said, if you're coming and just getting fed and you're here, or if you're tuning in getting fed and you're not reading daily, I would encourage you to read a couple chapters <clears throat> out of the New Testament, <clears throat> a couple out of the Old, and read the Psalms, and read the Proverbs of the day. Basic Bible reading, basic every day. And then do your devotion, and then do your studying. I'm not. I'm talking. That's just start your day with that. Six chapters, and then a devotion or two. And then we really want to get in there and study. Then you get in there and study, right? That way your spirit is full. It's, it's not quenched. You can testify with somebody. The way that we get our spiritual maturity is told to us right here in 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So grow in the grace and knowledge. Growth, growth is constant. It takes effort on our part to achieve that growth. Without spiritual discipline, you won't grow. We're to be growing daily. We're to, we're, we're, we never get there until the day of completion, until the day of Christ Jesus, we're to be maturing. You know, the, the script, abide in me and I in you, and you'll bear much fruit. Right? We've got to be growing. Amen. And I pray that you are. If you want to be a testimony the Lord's called you to be. But without spiritual discipline, there will be no growth. Without meat, there will be no growth. You gotta get in the meat. You gotta get in the word. And everyone here is qualified to share the word of God. If I can get up here and share it with the life I've lived and the things I've done, and, and the Lord can use me this way, man, there's no one in here that the Lord does not want to use to share his word. Amen. 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 You don't have to go to Bible school to share the word of God. You gotta get the word of God in you. Amen. And let the Spirit pull it out of you. Yes. And trust the Spirit, right? Yes. And the last one, be strong. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous be strong. And we know the source source of our strength is I just said it earlier, Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ Amen. who gives yes. me strength. Yes. Right? Yes. And when you exercise your faith, that's faith. To stand on that scripture takes faith. Right? It takes faith to stand on God's word. It takes faith to believe it. Right? Yes. But you'll have that attitude. When you read that scripture over, I don't know how many times I've read that scripture in my walk with the Lord, thousands of times. Thousands of times I've had a struggle or throughout my day and something's come up or something's come against me and, and I, I've said, man, I can do all things through Christ. Gives me strength. No matter what the situation may be, uh, I've done my own father's funeral. I guarantee you before that funeral, I'm saying to myself in my head, man, I can do all things through Christ. It gives me strength. Yeah, yeah. I said it thousands of times. I'll say it thousands more before I go home to be with the Lord, right? But you got to exercise that faith, and that comes from being in the Word. The Word will change your attitude. Amen. If you have a nasty attitude, get in the Word. <laughs> Google the scriptures about that'll help you for nasty attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee it'll take you to the Psalms. <laughs> you, do you struggle with anger? Anger? Google scriptures that'll help me with anger. Amen. Yeah. I mean, there's no excuse. Or go to the back of your Bible and look it up in your little index thing. But John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Amen. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The, the, the trick is to remain, abide, or remain. It says abide in the New King James. It says it eight times there. And to abide means to stay for a long time. Remain in me and I in you. Remain in me and I in you. And we remain in Him through our fellowship with Him, right? Amen. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You will bear much fruit. Is there fruit in your life? From the moment you got saved until now, is there fruit? Is there an ongoing process of fruit, fruit being developed in your life? Or is the tree got going and then it just... 
Have you seen those trees? Half of them are dead. <laughs> right? Got a little bit of green over here hanging on, but man, this side is just, it's gone. Cut that off. Right? Because he says in there, I'll remove anything that doesn't bear fruit. So that this side will be more fruitful. See, the problem with us is God removes things from our life, and we'll go dragging those things right back into our life. He'll remove a relationship from your life, and you'll go chasing that relationship down. And he removed it, he pruned it, he cut it out so the rest of your life could be fruitful. But man, you can't just let that thing go and you go dragging that old dead tree back in your life. Let him prune. And whatever he removes, let him remove it. So that the rest of the tree can be fruitful. Amen. We'll close with this. Uh, Psalms 31, 24. Be strong and take heart. All you who hope in the Lord. Be strong and take heart. All you who hope in the Lord. And I added that little Psalms there. Because that was part of my daily Bible reading. Right? Amen. Be strong and take heart. All you who hope in the Lord. Where's your hope today? I pray it's in the Lord. Amen. We're going to thank those for tuning in. We're going to ask that you stand. We'll close with a song of worship, and I'll be up here to pray for you guys.